You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Water is a major concern on Gabriola Island and all the islands in the Salish Sea. Freshwater, that is. We are surrounded by plenty of salt water, but the availability of fresh water on the islands themselves varies greatly from one to another, and even depends on where, on any given island, you live. That's why the Islands Trust is looking long-term at the water needs on the islands. The Islands Trust is a provincial government body that oversees the islands in the Salish Sea, between the British Columbia mainland and Vancouver Island, with a mandate to preserve and protect them. In the special meeting of Gabriola's representatives to the Islands Trust that you're about to see, the Trust's freshwater specialist, William Schulba, proposes conducting a water assessment survey on the island that would be a first step in understanding what the water needs of all the islands will be in future. That future is increasingly complex. As Schulba notes, climate change and the return of land to First Nations requires the Trust start looking ahead to those needs now. And Gabriola may be the place where they begin to do so. Here's that conversation. All right, so let's move on to the next topic then on our agenda, which is the water assessments. Great, thank you, Chair. And uh, thank you to the Gabriola Local Trust Committee for facilitating this conversation. Um, I'll start up to say that I, I do not have a PowerPoint presentation prepared, so um, I will be uh, speaking in general uh, about um, the briefing that I provided the Regional Planning Committee that is in your agenda package. Um, and for fear of hiding all your wonderful faces i won't share my screen either so if um if you have it available open to you um you can um, follow along that way and we can you can ask me questions um uh, about it as well um I, I think that i'll just start off to uh, um to discuss around just the nomenclature around it and and then briefly describe what a water balance is and um, discuss the uh, the availability of of data that is um, on Gabriola that that we can utilize to undertake a water balance. Um, can talk a little bit about budgeting. if if there's any questions that are related to those aspects, I'm more than willing to field them. If there's more questions related to more along the lines of like next steps and how we're going to undertake this type of work on Gabriola, um, I'll likely defer that to other, uh, likely to Planner Chadwick, um, especially around granting and in other funding avenues. Um, and yeah, please stop me at, at any time. This is, this is a special meeting, but it's uh, I wouldn't really, really want to say it's not formal, but but feel free to to engage with me in conversation if there's something that I say that you'd like me to um, to elaborate on, because um, I'm going to present this in in brief. I, I guess I would like to um, hear more from the local trust committee and your questions um, surrounding. What a water balance would mean for Gabriel Island. Um, so, water balance. Water balance is um, a term that is often used for this type of assessment. Uh, another word for it is water budget. In the Southern Gulf Islands in 2020, 2021, we undertook uh, groundwater availability assessments which can be related to water balance. 
Uh, however, the groundwater availability assessments is one piece of a water balance. The so water balance is a holistic view of uh, the amount of water that is available uh, on on a particular island uh, that has many different facets of of uh, like water productivity and also water use. And so the reason why uh, there is this push to use the term water balance rather than water budget is water budget can provide analysis of present day uh, water availability, um, where I believe water balance is more speaking towards the sustainability of the water and and future use and allocations. So in that context, I would assume that water budgeting is then a component of a larger water balance. I would say water balance is the is the umbrella term for the entire project. And the reason why I bring that up is that I believe that Islands Trust is in a good space to engage in a project that involves consultants as well as staff and discussions with trustees in the community about the methodology to determine water budget, which is in the simplest terms, how much water comes into the island from precipitation mostly, well, in totality, actually, that's where all of the water comes from, um, in different forms of precipitation, not just rain, but snow and fog, and and how much is is used. And the, the use is, is just beyond human use. It's how much the ecosystems use and how much the for lack of a better term, how much the ocean uses, how much the ocean receives in, in a given year. So that, that's the out part of it. And like I mentioned in my um, briefing, that water balance is, is an accounting of how much water goes in and out of an area, and an area we can define as a watershed. Um, and, and a watershed simply is, is that if a droplet of water falls on the landscape, that eventually it flows down the terrain to a common outlet. And on Gabriel Island, there's there's many watersheds. The the islands are quite unique with with um, the delineation of watersheds. Uh, for the fact that there is um, the, the the landscape is is quite small compared to the lower mainland or or main like like Vancouver Island uh and the amount of coastline that's associated with the landmass is is disproportional to essentially anywhere else in the world uh if if you look across the Nanaimo and say to the English Man River watershed the the amount of coastline that's associated with with that massive watershed is 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 a lot um is limited compared to the amount of coastline that surrounds uh Gabriel and um so on on Gabriel there, there can be uh I get we call them non-basin watersheds they're, they're quite smaller watersheds that may or may not even have a a permanent creek or even a temporary creek associated with them it's just an area that runs off water in the winter when there's excess water to the ocean um, so when I speak of watershed, it, it's, it's often just a, a, a collection of, of adjacent watersheds that are surrounded by a significant surface water feature. So, um, a, a, a water balance is, is an accounting of water and, and we can think of it as simply as, as a bank account that, uh, w- that water is put into the system and stored and then water is used from that storage so 
I, I, I often think about uh, my early days of of being a geoscientist, where I worked a lot in the winter and not so much in the summertime, because uh, I usually worked on frozen terrain in, 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 in Arctic Canada. You couldn't really go up there in the summertime that easily. And so I would make an abundance of money in the wintertime, and I would have to then budget that to spend it in the summer. And water balance and water budgeting is is really similar on the coast where we are provided precipitation in the winter time that is stored and then in the summertime we're using that stored water much beyond the amount of water that's coming in in the summer and that storage can be natural storage or it could be engineered storage so natural storage is in lakes and in wetlands and in aquifers and engineered storage is in reservoirs and tanks. Um, I am leaving out water recycling out of this question right now. It, it's it's a, pardon the pun, a drop in the bucket on the amount of water that's used across the Island Trust area. So um, return flows from septic fields and water recycling, I'm, I'm just for the sake of convenience, leaving this out of the conversation right now. Um, so the, the the largest storage container that we have on in the island trust area is the islands themselves, uh, subterranean storage and in, in what is generally known as aquifers is is by far the the main provider of stored water, um, and um, we we have a very small percentage of stored water in in engineered reservoirs and and plastic for lack of a better term um uh, across the island trust area to to provide summertime water um and i just want to reach back to a, a previous point that i wanted to make that what I described to you, the the ins and outs, this water accounting is is mostly water budgeting, and I think the overall water balance is is for us to uh, to 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 look at at the at the data and the information and the knowledge that comes from this water accounting, and then apply it to to water authorizations and future use. And and I believe that that ties into water balance and and to to think about how we allocate water and how we provide those authorizations and how we um, the impacts of land use planning on water use. If if we were to take a significant look at the Islands Trust climate emergency and reconciliation declaration it's without a doubt that that conversation and that work needs to deeply consider the impacts of climate change and have the involvement of first nations not only band and council but also traditional knowledge to understand what are the water needs for for that type of uh, activity for that vision for the future of the islands that is you know that's that's a step beyond the the scientific aspect of that so to, to round off my my nomenclature point of of this um, introduction to this topic is I, I think that the island trust is is well suited for undertaking a project with a particular budget and uh, hiring a consultant and and perhaps some other auxiliary staff like a co-op student or something like that to determine uh, for Gabriel Island. Um, as as the main case study, a modern day 
methodology for determining water budget for the Island Trust area for a particular island. Um, the the overall engagement of that tool, the 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 holistic water balance approach would require deep coordination with um, with First Nation and and with with climate change professionals to to truly understand if 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 the approach to our water budget has sustainability built into it and if it is not sustainable if our current case is not sustainable into a changing climate then we need to understand that and and approach mitigation measures to to avoid serious issues in the future um so i hope that provides a little bit of context for um what water balance is and and how there how, how islands trust can approach the first steps with this in isolation for lack of a better term but the the overall uh application of this work is going to require some significant coordination and for us as as island trust staff to to do due diligence in that we would need to have um staff to staff and also political pathways to to engage with with um with partners that that are directly affected by land use planning and how that directly affects uh water availability in the future um there's a lot of regulatory considerations around that in the water sustainability act there is a tool called water reserves where water can be allocated for future use that has been not engaged in the south coast yet um there is deep considerations now of environmental flow needs and the impacts of water allocations on salmon and salmon habitat and currently there's a lot of work on that in the coxilla uh, river watershed which is a tributary to the cowichan river um and 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 all, all of those stories and and um analysis are quite complex but there there are some simple uh fundamental data and information challenges that that island trust can play a, a role into solving to help answer those those questions um yeah so uh if if i were to um actually i'm going to stop there and ask if there's any questions about what i just said and hopefully that was somewhat clear well how, uh, the brave susan yates has her hand up that's a, a wonderful presentation uh william thank you so much and the briefing is excellent um there are a couple of things I have traditionally never called any of the water catchment areas on Gabriola watersheds. I've always called them water catchment areas because having um, having worked in northern BC and and um, mountainous areas, I think of those areas and even Salt Spring Island, I think of as having true watersheds. So I don't know whether that's accurate or not. Um, and then um, just a real quick question. I guess this would go to Planner Chadwick. So looking at all of these ideas and um, sort of the, the, the complicated things that we must do to accomplish what we know we need to do, are we still looking at a budget of approximately $50,000? Uh, yeah, so that's the budget that we've got uh requested and yes we like we need to go we need to see i mean in, in an ideal in the ideal scenario gabriola will be able to get that that money allocated from trust council and in addition we'll be able to get this additional funding from the complete communities grant and so essentially gabriola will be the ltc 
um, that the methodology that will essentially then be um, applied uh, to the other LTCs will 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 be able to be applied. So at minimum, we need the th the fifty thousand dollars. If we get more, then we'll be able to, uh, you know, likely do more detailed work. And I mean, I think um, William would have will have a better um, sense of that. But um, but I would say like to to do like uh, to do an excellent like to do that. To really nail this methodology, my understanding is that um, we'll be able to enhance enhance it if we get the additional uh, money from the Complete Communities Grant. Mm -hmm. and, and provide a really good template for future OCPs in the trust area. And it sounds like- Correct. Perhaps, yeah, it sounds like perhaps Denman might, might be the next one as well. So thank you. Very That's much. right, yeah. And we've got, I'd also add, you know, we do have the suitable land analysis that is providing an, an excellent um, uh, template, essentially, for for grounding all of this information and identifying it, how how all of the information that we have available to us um, can be brought together to make decision making. And so this the, the, the water balance is definitely a, a critical piece um, in that whole conversation around balancing, um, you know, density needs, for example, with... Um, with uh, water preservation as well as um, as well as the environmental protection con considerations. Um, yeah, and, and through the chair, I I also wanted to have a comment on on the cost. Um, I think in the islands trust area, the uh, cheapest island to do this analysis on is Gabriola, for the specific reason that the regional district of Nanaimo's drinking water and watershed protection program has been collecting information on Gabriel the water use for over a decade. Um, and, and that, that piece of information is the most difficult one um, to obtain for this analysis. We, we know, more of how much the ecosystems are using than humans are using. It's more predictable. <laughs> um, we, we have, we've done some pretty good estimates um, for the Southern Gulf Islands, but they're, 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 that's, that's where the challenge is, that's where the data gap is. And so we would, um, we, we would heavily rely on, on the Regional District of Nanaimo's uh, program to provide us critical information from water use assessments and their surveys, which is like, you know, like qualitative work. And then they have quantitative data from groundwater monitoring locations across the island. Um, and I have a closer relationship with that team. I've been um, participating in their technical advisory committee since I started at Islands Trust. So um, they are, uh, really excited that their work can be applied to something like this. Uh, of course, the RDN has done a lot of work on water balance. So they're a great partner to, to, to work with. I would, I would hope that we can encourage them to even be an external partner on this project um, uh, because they have the expertise, well, not the expertise, but the, the experience in and undertaking this, they just finished the French Creek watershed um, water balance. I think at the tune, of, it was north of one hundred thousand dollars for that project, um, and and that's and that's working off their existing information. So it, it just gives a good idea of of how much this this work costs to do, um, and and that that's what makes uh, if I may be so bold besides the positive political wins from the local trust committee, um, having, having that, that information, um, is, is already filling a data gap on Demon Island is the opposite. Demon Island only has, uh, uh, one uh, observation well from the province and, um, the, the water demand is, is, well, we, we don't really know the water use that well. Um, I think they've done a little bit of work on it, on agricultural water demand, which is by far the biggest water agricultural practices, by far the biggest water user across the Islands Trust area. Um, I, I have a co-op student this term, and we just did a little bit of analysis on rainwater harvesting. And 
And to put it in perspective for just a traditional market garden at a hectare, the, the amount of, of, of square footage for a roof to support that hectare, one hectare garden, just from rainwater catchment was, was mind boggling. I had to go check our math a few times, but it was large, like as large as like a horse riding rink. Like I, I know that I, I know that many gardeners find ways to lower their their irrigation demand on the islands, but I was just like comparing it to a typical mainland um, uh, market garden. The the amount of water is is immense compared to domestic use. Um, so that, that's, that's always been a challenge and, but the regional district in Nanaimo does have an agricultural water demand model of the RDN, but it was from 2013. So that method would have to be looked at again. Um, and, and hopefully RDN would, would, would partner with us in that to determine agricultural water demand. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't want to make promises for them, but, um, what I'm trying to say is that is that there's a really good partner there that that they're they're aware and and have the mandate really because they're the program to to help us with this work and and we'll leverage their data greatly. Um, yeah, I'm I'm wondering where we should go to next for this um, special meeting. Maybe I'll get some direction from Nur from planner chadwick um the, i see trustee elliott's hand oh sorry trustee elliott i didn't see your hand there it's all good um i have a couple of questions and yeah thank you for bringing up the rdn's um watershed program so there there was in our september ltc meeting um a package with a lot of information staff report um from the rdn and um so I, I guess I'm wondering a couple of things. Um, I see that Gabriel has what, six monitoring wells. Um, and is that considered sufficient for an area of this size and complexity? Because I know from personal experience and just from talking to a lot of people, how much even within a neighborhood, which might be understood to be on the same watershed or aquifer um water flow can be radically different and um so i guess is there a potential for this project is is you know if it <laughs> goes forward that the data monitor or the the data collection the picture gets more and more more complex and we end up having to gather more and more data and creating a methodology is is going to be very good and specific for Gabriola but is there a danger it might not be useful for other islands like because I'm just wondering the more we go into this the more there is to learn and to know and and it it seems like a, an incredibly complex topic I'm super grateful that the RDN has got these well so I, I guess I have a number of questions and I, I'm not at all challenging the premise that we should embark on this project. I'm super grateful that we'd be considered as sort of a pilot or a leader because of um, how we're situated in position. But um, I, I wonder, do we have assurance that it's going to be useful across the trust area and sort of worth the investment? I guess that is my, cause, cause that's what we'll have to defend to trust council for spending this money and, and really focusing and developing the methodology. So I, I, just looking for supporting arguments um, in that vein. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, thank thank you for that question. Um, I'll try to unpack it the best I can. Um, so uh, you asked if six wells is is sufficient. Better or nothing. I, I know I'm being facetious. Um, it, it 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 it's not bad, actually. Um, I, I, ideally, uh, there would be a a monitoring location in in every um, like major collection of watersheds, or or we call them sometimes groundwater regions. Um, 
um, aside from the pilot project that I've done on Salt Spring Island that has 13 monitoring wells across the island, um, uh, Gabriel by far has the, the most groundwater monitoring. So to say that the methodology that will be developed to determine, um, or I should say the the resolution or the completeness of the analysis on Gabriola is the same across the island stress area? Of course not. Um, is the methodology will be robust enough to be applied to the major islands? Um, yeah, that's that's the approach. Um, for example, uh, Golder Associates did their water balance on Salt Spring Island and just used the three wells. And they used what's called a water table fluctuation method. And I was highly critical of it, still am, because it was just not the right fit. Um, because they were using real far away wells to to do analysis on distant regions of of the island and completely different aquifers and, and geological regions. I just didn't understand that approach. Um, and so we're aware of that challenge. Um, and this is the reason why we're focused on Denman next, because Denman is the opposite case, with, with doesn't have the monitoring like Gabriella has. And that will be in in the the not just in the minds, but in the scope of work for our consultants taking on this work. Um, so are we developing a methodology that will be used across the islands trust area? Yes. Will the quality of the output be the same for areas that we have no idea how much water people are using and we have no idea on on the the water levels in 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 the majority of areas of each island will no and and will will the ultimate recommendations be to set fire to some of the regional districts that are doing absolutely nothing for the islands yes like this is to, especially on the chairs island how there's not anything going on there after the regional district has collected millions of dollars over five years now, Chair, since you passed through the, 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 um, the, what do you call that? Uh, when, you, when you ask the public for something, can you help me? The Yeah, it's three to five years and it was a, wa a uh, community water assessment uh, process. And indeed the question that existed when that taxation model was being created was how were they going to, um, how was it going to benefit Thetis Islanders? I think we only have one, maybe two wells on Thetis that are actually monitored. And indeed the uh, topology is, uh, is again, different numerous watershed potentials. So uh, yeah, I haven't seen anything and uh, that is a, a tax line item. Yeah. What do you call that when you go to vote on something? Can you help me? Um, I don't know that it was a referendum. It was, referendum. A, yeah, it, referendum. it was a referendum. It was because it's uh now because the cap or the Couch and Valley Regional District has a drinking water and watershed protection program. They went to referendum and they got seven fifty thousand dollars a year and and I would say I, I I'm not aware. I haven't been made aware of that funds being directly um put to use on thetis beyond maybe just like in the regional context so your report it's entirely possible i could go to the regional district website and see if there's a section associated with thetis but certainly it's not been brought to our attention right and so that that's my point exactly right like like um denman um island uh is in the couch and valley regional district and and they, they did, the Couch and Valley Regional District doesn't have a drinking water water protection program. Um, so 
so that that is an, an an obvious spot of improvement but in areas where where it has been implemented like on for thetis island we we haven't we haven't seen that and 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 really, it it uh, it is the function of the regional district to pro- provide that. I've been providing uh, that service per se on on Salt Spring Island, and it, it's totally unsustainable for me to do it. Like for for the regional district in Nanaimo, they have a full time person just running their groundwater monitoring project program, and and so uh, th- there's one part of this work that is 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 looking at the ins and outs of water and, and, and undertaking a methodology. But then there's an, another part of this work is to describe the story and, and expose the information and information gaps, data gaps, regulatory gaps around this work and, and, f- and find pathways to solve them. Because if we don't, well, then our, it's not sustainable don't have sustainable water practices if that if that's the case um and 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 for me as a practitioner and like you know in the sweet spot of my career and 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 i i look for areas to to develop knowledge and and to and to move the silent science along and that's really all that's really good right if we can create a methodology that can be at some point in the future implemented across the island trust area that's great if we can accomplish a water balance that makes sense in 2023 for gabriola then that is a, a, a huge win right so i think i think it's both i think i think we can look to see how this um this methodology does get pushed out to the rest of the island trust area. And that is definitely a main focus of this, but, but really we want to get it right for Gabriola with, with the the data that we have today, the partnerships that we have today and, and, you know, the energy that Island trust staff are bringing to it today, that, that that's all really important. Right. Cause that, like, trust me, I've looked back on the water work and, and seeing similar eras in in water policy in bc in the last 30 to 40 years and observed moments in time like this especially in the late 90s early 2000s where all of the islands got water allocation plans you had you had very um uh dedicated water professionals you had uh, a good political environment and then in the early 2000s, it all went away and we went dark for a long period of time until the, the uh, what did they call it? Like, uh, it was like the precursor to the Water Sustainability Act. It was like the, the BC's water plan. I can't, I can't really, it, when it started in 2008 and finally we got this momentum. And then look, we're, we're just implementing the Water Sustainability Act now. And so two decades of lost time and, and, and what happened with climate and, and economy and, and, and population growth in, in the Islands Trust area over that time with largely unregulated water. So, um, yeah, I, I think that like now's the time to really act on this because we have the, the watershed security strategy and fund the the water sustainability act has now been handed over to water uh water land and not not and resource stewardship out of ministry of forests so there's like there's there's a lot of good policy going on around this work and then i think that if we engage in a project in a good way i think that will then attract more interest for 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 the areas of the island trust area that are going to be inherently much more problematic to undertake this word like work like Laskidi and and like Denman and like Thetis where where we we don't have the same partnerships and and the data is not there and to identify a strategy to to start filling those data gaps um I think generally with this work we just wait till the conditions are right and 
Luckily, the conditions are right for Gabriola, but the conditions may not be right for the rest of the island's trust area. And we should take the time to identify those data gaps and, and strategies to start to fill them to, to undertake this work. So do I envision that we would have a water balance assessment for every island across the island's trust area in this term? No way. I, I, there's just no way. It, it's it'd be way too much money and there and we just don't have the data for it so i'm not sure maybe i just maybe that was a political bomb that i just dropped because we want to but it the, the whole idea is like we just have to i mean I'm trying to say this with like political correctness but like we need to be the adults in the room here and address the challenges that we have to undertake this work. And, and I think this is a really good start for it because I think that for Gabriola, by the end of this term, we can have a finished product for a water balance that, that, that involves our partners and, and engages all of us in discussions on how to, to engage the province for water allocations and, and, and for, to give some really good tools to land use planners. Um, yeah, and I have to remind so myself this we is have a recorded a number of questions out there. So oh yeah, yeah, let's go. let's let's go for it. Yeah. So thank you for your passionate. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I have to continuously remind myself that this is a public recorded meeting and not we're just sitting around having a a, a think tank discussion. But no, yeah. And so I think I'm going to go to Susan Yates and then back to Trustee Elliott and then Nerissa Chadwick. Do you need to chime in at this uh, juncture? No. Okay. So let's go to Susan. Then. Oh, thank you, Chair Luckham. I love listening to you, William. Um, <laughs> I would say also that the the current local trust committee is is pretty on board for being the right time to. Um, so, you know, I love your comment about 2001. It was the beginning of the dark ages for environmentalists, for schools, and for libraries. And I'm glad you said that because I still think about 2001 and how bad it got after that. But I do have a question uh, re relating directly to that really good diagram on page three of your briefing on water balance with productivity and demand. So considering that, you know, you mentioned that agriculture by far across the trust area, and, and I'm sure elsewhere, is the biggest user. In the On the right-hand side, under conservation, we have uses like landscaping and gardening, but agriculture is not in that list. And I wrote it in myself a, a while ago. And I'm just wondering if there's a reason that you, you didn't put it on the, you know, on the list of uses. Uh, great question. Um, it's um, most like uh, agriculture and all other non-domestic use is is all, and I should have maybe described this, is all contained within license limits. Um, uh, agri um, irrigating um, anything beyond, I think a quarter acre, I got that right, yep, is uh, is deemed a a non-domestic use, right? So you can have your garden, you can water it with your, just under your dom own domestic water um, uh, deemed right, which is not, you don't have to get a license for that. Um, but uh, any, any commercial or industrial or agricultural use needs a license. And so there's license limits put on that from the province, from the authorizations of that. And so th that's why I put it into that conservation. Maybe that's not the best title for that I guess what I was trying to say there, when you when you change the conservation of those bullet points, that you can move the water demand up and down. Same with efficiencies, and um, and when I when I said license requirements on the efficiency side, that's that's how much the the or what the province requires um, for a particular license. If the say if it's a for lack of a better example, laundromat, and and the province like, well, I have a laundromat on the Gulf Islands. You need to have high efficiency, you know, washers, which they don't do. But I'm just saying, like within the water requirement or license requirements, you can there can be efficiencies built into that water use. Um, 
And thank you for turning our minds to, to this diagram here. Um, for the most part, we, on Gabriola, we have the productivity done. We have recharge mapping. Uh, we, we have climate change assessments for, for our climate change models. Um, we know the well density. Um, we have a decent understanding of, of like ecosystem drift and, and the, and the impacts of, of a change in climate, uh, evapotranspiration, how much the ecosystems use and, and push back out to the atmosphere. Um, so there's a lot of work that's been done since, you know, since I've been here and, and, and from previous, um, work from, from the province and the regional district. Um, so really the, the, for the water balance will be focused a lot on, on the demand and use side. Um, so we, we have a really good step forward. Like when a consultant comes into this, they'll be getting a world of data to, to work with. It's not, they won't be starting from scratch at all. Um, yeah. And I think I'll leave that at that unless you have, if you have a follow-up question, I'll answer it. So following on that, Chair, if I may ask a question. Um, yeah, so that's that's actually really wonderful because I, I wanted to ask a question about what we know and where we need to go on Gabriola in terms of telling the story. And I think that's, um, I'm fascinated by the science. I, I really love um, learning everything you've articulated. So thank you for that. Um, what I'm interested in more is how to tell the story to the public and to fellow trustees about the need and the, I guess there's three parts, that, where we're at, you know, what we know, what we need to know, um, sort of the critical issues that face us if we don't address this, um, and how can people engage ordinary citizens how can they feel part of the solution because i think the multiple challenges of increasing density climate change first nations returning home uh, a lot of the confluence of, of issues that communities are facing today if they don't have an avenue to plug into and and feel like they're part of the solution they're just going to be critical and especially if things are we're studying things uh, and you know a report comes out every year or so um it'll be it, there's always the criticism well what's the islands trust doing or, we're budgeted money for this so uh, i'm just sort of standing in this place going how can we help our communities understand where to plug in so one question is um is there an opportunity for people to put volunteer monitoring gauges on their wells in different areas? Can we beef up the um, data collection? Um, what is the opportunity to engage citizen scientists or um, folks in, in this kind of work? Uh, you say we've got a lot of data collection or data um, already, and we need to determine the usage and so how can people participate in that? And I, I know this is a longer, that's, we, we're not there yet, but that's that's the direction I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. I'll, 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 I'll definitely defer to Narissa for the main chunk of, of your questions there, uh, especially re relating to like, where do we go from here and, and planning and what happens if we don't do this work? Um, for for respect to like this particular project, it, it is at a scope to increase the amount of data collected. I, I would think like we just don't have there would just wouldn't be the budget for that. So this is really processing data that we already have um, with with the recommendations coming out of that for filling in data gaps. Um, and and that would that would then lead to future work and and perhaps um, maybe even a critical analysis of of the drinking water watershed protection program um, that they could you know facilitate better data collection for this type of work and and then that could be applied to other islands that 
that are maybe building a program or don't have it. Um, uh, yeah, I, however, I want to, uh, yeah, I, uh, about citizen science and engaging community. And, and I think that's really great. And I think we could do that for this project. I think we can do that within a year, especially like just understanding more about how much water people use. So it could, that could be through a survey that could be through a, a, like a community information meeting. It could be through, um, I don't know, like a booth at the Sunday market or Saturday market, something like that to, to start getting to the conversation of, of how much water people use. It's, it's the biggest challenge and it's definitely something that, a consultant, we would burn up their budget if they went to the islands and started poking around to try to find out how much water people use. It's just that wouldn't be part of their scope of work. So, but their scope of work could be working with a community group or working with staff that works with the community group or working with a coordinator, however the project gets set out and how much budget we have for it, uh, to to undertake a a a, a water use survey would be ideal because within that survey. We can provide information. Um, it gives uh, a point of contact for residents to engage with the project, which is is exactly what's needed for these projects. We did the Southern Gulf Islands groundwater availability assessment. Like that was just a tag on to the recharge work. Uh, put it this way: we we did those five islands, and and did the recharge work and this groundwater availability assessment, and learned from that and then the following year we did gabriola demon and hornby just the recharge for the same amount of money and and that's just how much work the, our consultant put in that was essentially unpaid for the southern gulf islands it was a lot of work and and so we realized like the scope of this work is so large and and what what didn't happen there is we didn't have a lot of we we had zero on island coordination so so something like that would be like really essential to to the efficacy of of this work and something that we would want to work with like the likely the trustees with or or a online or on island coordinator or, or something like that I, I don't know how that looks yet as part of a project but but i would say that's that's definitely a way to generate new data uh and within the scope of a one year project i i think there that's totally feasible um yeah, so that's my comment on that. And then, Nerissa, do you think you want to touch base on the other bit of uh, Trustee Elliott's? Uh, yeah, sure. Question? Yeah, yeah. So through the chat, I was I, so yeah. So I was just going to say, um, um, I mean, what we, we have this as part of the OCP uh, process um, generally, right? So, um, so out of the visiting process, I imagine there will be some discussion about water. So already we'll be able to, um, you know, indicate that we're moving forward to, to understand that piece a bit more. Um, we've got, and I, I keep on bringing up the the suitable land analysis because I think that really does provide a way of, like, illustrating how the data that we will generate can be used, and we may, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, William, um, be able to uh, get like a sort of a more general sense of things. Um, like there are layers of understanding that we can kind of get to. Like what you're talking about, I think, um, Toby, is a much more detailed analysis. And I'm thinking like where we can get without, uh, what we can get to a place where, where we have sort of a general sense of things. And even with the sort of ad hoc work that was done for um, the Southern Gulf Islands, we were... Um, we were able to, like when we were looking at um, increased, increasing density in areas, we were able to, to um, identify the areas that were um, of most concern. And, and so the, there's the opportunity there if you want to dig into it to get a little bit more, more detailed, depending on where the community wants to go with that, right? So I think the, the first cut will allow us to get um a level of data at a you know at a certain level and it'll it'll be useful because of what it'll 
what it'll measure is order of mag magnitude, essentially. Like these are the, the really critical areas. These are the less critical areas. And that's enough to use um, at a higher, from a higher level, like land use planning perspective. Like if we, we're, we're, we're looking pr pretty good in this area, we're not looking good in this area. So let's concentrate on this area if you want to go there, right? Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we can, we can choose to go further um, depending on how the project goes. But um, the opportunity with the OCP reviews is already there, I think. Um, and the communications that we've got going on, like um, as we move out of this sort of initial visioning um, stage into the finer focused OCP phases, we can start to do communications that are very specific. And that's where we can do the, the communications related, like most specifically to the the water piece. And there'll be other pieces, I think, that will emerge as we move forward. Oh, Chair Luckham, I think you're talking, but you're muted. Yeah, my apologies. I've had a page out and I'm trying to monitor the pay the call in case there's some intervention required, but it's all going fine. Um, anyway, just um, keeping an eye on the time here, we've got 20 minutes remaining in this. This has gone quite quickly and is certainly quite interesting and fully absorbing. Um, I'm just thinking about uh, the recommended next steps as noted in the uh, in the briefing and um, and follow up. And so. Um, uh, can we maybe look to, to Nerissa for uh, remarks on what, whether or not you need any direction out of this meeting today and uh, how we should uh, provide that to you in order to facilitate the work? If um, indeed that's what the trustees want to do, which I gather. Sure. Yeah. So I'm also seeing um, uh, Susan's hand up, but I'll, I'll be brief here. Um, um, so there's a, uh, Next step. That's related. To, so that was a briefing for the the regional planning committee. Is what is what you received today. Um, so for for this LTC, essentially, um, you know the 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 focus is on really trying to get that that money in the budget in your budget, so that you can be guaranteed to be able to support this work because this work, from my perspective. Um, William's perspective is quite critical to your OCP review. Like if you want to do your OCP review right. And have that information, and and um, I think it's it's a really important and critical piece. Um, we don't know if we're going to be able to 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 get the complete communities grant. We're going to apply for it. I was told that they're likely going to be over oversubscribed this this um this round, and because Salt Spring got it previously, they may be looking at that as oh well, you know, Islands Trust got one, so. You know who knows how they're going to be looking at it, but we'll staff will do our best to to try and get that funding. But that funding is not guaranteed. I think is the key, and this work is is very very important. And being able to have that methodology that can then be easily you know can be used by other uh, local trust committees. It's it's, it's not just a um a value to Gabriella, but um across the the trust area. So, so next step is really to to get that funding, and then once that when, once we know that it's supported, we'll create a, a work plan and um, and then move forward from there. Okay. So one last thing, if you don't mind, Susan, I'll come immediately to you. Just remind me, what's the uh, time frame for announcements with respect to funding? Will that happen before our budget cycle here uh, debate happens? Not this month, but by March. Um, I mean, I think you you you've been through it more than I have, and it it seems very complicated. But um, I mean, from what I understand, I mean, there's some sort of preliminary decisions that will be made at trust council r related to the budget, and then final. No, final. I mean about uh, getting the grant from the. Oh, the grant. Oh, well, that's always uncertain. So the 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 um the um deadline is I think it's the 12th of January. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Great. So yeah, yeah. Okay, Susan, over to you. Thank you, Chair Luckham. I did put something in the chat. You can all read it. But there is a very gung-ho, independent, ad hoc group on Gabriola that has um, sort of one of the spokes on the wheel of Sustainable Gabriola, which is our transition group here on this island. One of the spokes is completely obsessed with water, and they will do anything they can to help us 
um, in our quest to get this work done. And in fact, today I stopped in at the trust office to pick up this fabulous pamphlet, Groundwater or Shared Responsibility, and I'll be handing it out to them this evening. So I think we're going to have good citizen participation when we get to the OCP for, for the water. Thank you. Chair, I just have one more question about um, sort of responsibility for the work. Um, I I just looked in through your report and then saw the reference to the phase one that the RDN did, I think in 2014. It's fascinating. I've never seen that before. Great. Going to take a look at it. Uh, water budget project. I'm oh, sorry, 2012. Um, so frequent criticism is, well, that's the RDN's job. And and so I'm still trying to understand who's, you know, we work in cooperation. Um, they're doing the work to collect the data. It's our job as land use planning, um, the the authority of, of land use planning. So how do we, um, I, I'm just trying to understand the, the relationship, I guess, um, between the regional districts and, and our yeah, our role. Thanks. Marissa's got her hand up. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, my response is we're trying, we're we're trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, that's that's that seems to be my experience when I have conversations with different regional district uh, staff, is that there's interest in in supporting the the trust, but there there isn't a sense of how, and there isn't necessarily allocated staff resources to do that. So in a way, my feeling is that if, if we can show some leadership, demonstrate some leadership on this stuff, um, that we can encourage that relationship. Um, I, I, um, I mean, William understands a little bit more on the, the, the details of the, of the, of the water program, but, um, but, but I think when we have um, a better sense of where we're going, it's much easier for us to develop those relationships with people who can help us. I think it would be helpful. Maybe we can tease this out later, not in this meeting, but um, I, I really want a mental model uh, and it graphed out different regional districts. And for the example that you gave with Thetis and, and Cowichan Valley Regional District and sort of where that has dropped in terms of delivery for for the island community that we need to understand from a trust wide perspective that all those relationships are at different places. And so the strength of this project, I think can be best displayed by here's what the regional district of Nanaimo has undertaken. Now we take that data and we're going to use it for land use planning, which we know and we're, we have the authority to do. So we need sort of a leaderboard um, I just, it's all about communication. It mm -hmm. is all communication. And so understanding that all areas are not equal, first of all, that yes, now I get it that we can apply the methodology on Gabriola, but it's going to be adapted to each island. Here's the strength of, you know, Gabriola, but Denman's weak in this area. So we got to test it out in a, on an island that doesn't have the data. And so that's now thank you for this conversation it's clear to me but i think we need a a really good articulation of where the different relationships are at and those responsibilities and the 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 moral <laughs> responsibility or the moral imperative to do this work is you have to do it when when the um the opportunity presents and this is that opportunity as you said william so um okay yeah also i mean it's we have a responsibility to the Islands Trust Act. The regional districts don't. Neither does provincial water authorization staff either. Water authorizations is handing out water whenever they get asked for it. And and there, there is a lack of definition of responsibility on on how land use planning is supporting those water authorizations. And beyond that, we have a reconciliation declaration. That's the responsibility of the trust, right? We said we're taking on this role. And, and the regional districts won't, won't 
address that for us. It's not their responsibility, right? So I, I agree with you, but you know, Trustee Elliot, I've been asking for a very long time for even through the freshwater sustainability strategy development, what define the roles and responsibilities of the different governing organizations and agencies around water. And it's nothing but deflection. Because it's very difficult to, to say, yes, that's our role. And over here, yes, that's our role. Or for determining for for going out there and and having the the ability to to have to to own infrastructure and and go out and and measure groundwater levels i do believe that's the responsibility of the regional district but doing undertaking a water balance for this for the sake of planning the regional district is doing that for the municipalities and and yes they did do the phase 1 for gabriola but i can tell you that was 10 years ago and since then they've done a lot more work on the areas that the regional district is planning for, like French Creek, right? Where the majority of it is rural residential and it's actually the regional district planners that are planning out that area, not like the city of Nanaimo uh, planners, right? That they, where they have uh, responsibility over. So uh, for, for the sake of land use planning, yes. I mean, I think Islands Trust has the responsibility for determining intensity and density and 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 figuring out like domestic water allocation sure but i think we can take a hard look at like what is the islands trust act what are we doing here and 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 how does water sustainability uh relate to that and 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 how we are the responsible agency to protect these islands and ecosystems it's really interesting. That's where it gets okay. There's a lot of overlapping jurisdiction there because, you know, if you talk about just salmon populations, how many agencies have responsibility over making sure that salmon are healthy? If the feds and the water and the and the marine waters, you have the province for RAR, and then you have the 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 local governments that are responsible for enacting the RAR, the riparian area regulation. It's 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 very it's very I mean, not not <laughs> not to continuously say what Trustee Patrick says, but water is messy, right? Water is muddy. It, it's a it's a very difficult and complex regulatory environment. And I think whenever the opportunity arises that an agency can take the leading role, especially if it's coordinated with other agencies, that that agency needs that has the responsibility to take it. I think because we're all trying to trend towards water sustainability and now watershed security. And and I'm really excited about watershed security and fund. I I, I think it's it, I mean there's going to be some really progressive policies coming out of that, and and I just want Islands Trust to be in a good space to to sure accept funding and money for it, but also just be a responsible partner so we can look back in this moment in time on the hundredth anniversary of the Islands Trust and say right that was a watershed moment the 50th year of the of the islands trust right like there's something that happened there that that turned the tides on on water sustainability i mean i i've been here for seven years almost and my forecast of of water sustainability is lukewarm there's some really significant challenges and and we're dealing with some historical poor planning and um i just i professionally and personally i just think we're not doing our due diligence with ensuring that there's water for our first nation partners it's just something that we just have not even talked about so i think that's where the responsibility lies with the islands trust yeah that's a complex topic topic many of those things of which we've only become you know, more broadly aware of mm -hmm. those responsibilities. And so the historic land use uh, matters have not considered any of this, let, let alone water sustainability. Right. So, um, yeah. So uh, what else? Is there anything else for us to know or provide direction? We're just absorbing this information. Uh, clearly, what you're saying is that we need to uh, garner support at the council table. Um, for this uh, piece of the budget to support this project on Gabriola and Denman. 
Um, so yeah, the challenge is before us. Yeah, thanks, Chair. And, and also just to complete my, because I, I I know that I I'm trying to balance the positive and not so positive of of this work. That like you're right. We in the past when we land use plan, this wasn't even considered, and and all of this is knowledge and progress. And I'm not laying blame on anybody, of course. Um, I think uh, uh, we're just faced with some significant challenges and and I think we we're in a good spot to reflect back on on those shortcomings to 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 plan for a more sustainable future but yeah indeed I'm not I'm not placing blame on anybody I I wish the regional districts would be more proactive though that's for sure <laughs> but yeah um I think for next steps and and moving this to trust council and stuff I would defer that to Narissa, but I would like to thank you, Chair, and 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 I appreciate the that you are giving staff the the space to to express our I, I think you can tell that Narissa and I are both trying to balance our professionalism and passion around this. And and I think sometimes my passion gets away from me. Um but uh yeah I, I appreciate this conversation and and thank you to the LTC as well. Hey, Narissa, do you have some closing words for us? Um, Go team. Go team. <laughs> okay. Trustees, anything you'd like to add? Passion is a good thing, and it is it is the only thing that's going to get us through this hard work. It's going to be a tough slog. I think um, this is, if we don't address this now, the, the critical issues of jurisdiction over water and authorizations and use is going to be the battleground for the next 50 years and it's going to be ugly and we don't want, want that to happen so i think proactive communication is is got to be and good planning has got to be at the forefront sorry narissa no that's fine i i, I did have my opportunity er earlier um but i did also want to mention that um it, it it is gathering this data is also a really um good opportunity for tangible con a conversation with um with first nations with the nation um because we will have we, we will be able to demonstrate that we're wanting to, to do um evidence-based decision making and we'll have the kind of data that we need to have conversations around water allocations like a t an actual tangible offering essentially um so that's another you know huge value to this this exercise so thank you for using that phrase, evidence-based decision-making. I don't think I heard anybody say that yet today. And that's critical in our decision-making is do we have evidence, the facts to support the ask, you know, and indeed uh, I've been reading up on meeting procedures and methodologies and, you know, what's the problem and is this the right solution and do we have the information to um, undertake it? So um appreciate that. Susan, any last remark? No, but I think this has been a really good meeting. Thank you all very much. All right. And Stephen, I hope this has been helpful to you in, uh, in um, your uh, future support for the LTC here. Do you have any remarks? No, I, I don't. But yeah, it hasn't been able to be here. So thanks. All right. So um, does that conclude our conversation today? It, it's certainly today, this conversation, but obviously there's a lot more conversations in the future. And uh, indeed, uh, if if we don't manage to find the support we need to advance this particular product, what uh, what is the alternate solution to like to consider what our plan B might be in order to uh, continue this? What is uh, important work? Just before we close, um, is a future action perhaps to articulate? And I know. Marissa, you're going to take this forward in your reporting to the LTC, but to articulate with the notes from today's meeting, um, sort of a one-page case for why Gabriola is the um, the ideal candidate. It's not because, you know, the chair is the chair of this LTC and Toby Elliott has a loud voice at council and Susan Yates is very seasoned and, and wise trustee. <laughs> this isn't a political decision. I would love to hear um, or just have a write-up of of why this is the um, the way to go. 
that would help support um, our work at council. Speaking notes would help, yeah. Um, Marissa, Chadwick? Yeah, so would you like to pass a motion to direct staff to do so? Because then we've got it formal. Love to. Um, so I guess with the minutes come out from this conversation, um, because I think it'd be helpful to have the a, a little bit of the feedback from the trustees and, and the direction that we're thinking and why we support this. But, um, what am I thinking? And time frame would be... Well, you have a limited amount of time and energy between now and council, if you want. No, to. not for this council. No, no. Um, I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, so just, I, a sum, just a summary, um, requesting staff to provide a summary uh, for the... Uh, basically to fill out the reason, the recommendation of why Gabriella and Denman would be the ideal first, or not first, but what is? I got to go back to the so. Notes can here. can I help you with a resolution? Please, please do. I suck at this. Um, so I think it would be to um, for to direct staff to provide uh, a memo outlining um, the rationale behind supporting um, or behind um, um, funding or. Funding support from Trust Council for uh, water balance assessments. And why the why Gabriel and Denman are good and why, candidates and why Gable, for yeah. methodology yeah. development. I think that's, so basically articulating what's in your recommendation there, why the next steps. I'd like to see that fleshed out as, um, as a memo would be great. Sorry, oh, Lisa sweet. Millard, <laughs> we're doing it to you again. Um, so, Toby, if you move that, I'll second it once we've got it figured out. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, the Gabriel Island Local Trust Committee directs staff to provide a memo outlining rationale behind funding support from Trust Council for water balance assessments and why Gabriel and Denman Islands are chosen for this As ideal candidates for the methodology, methodology development. development. Chosen as ideal candidates for methodology development. Methodology development. You're amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Yes. I so move. I'll second. And then I have a question. Okay. So are you clear on that motion, Lisa? Yes. All right. So moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Yes, I have a question. Um, so who, this is great, we'll get this done. And then who are we directing it to? Are we going to direct it to EC or to council? Like, who are we, who do we need this for? This is a tool for you, I think. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay. Yep, yep. All of those mm -hmm. in favor? Any opposed? Nobody's opposed. That's a good thing. All right, that carries. Is there any further business today? Then I'll call for the meeting adjournment. I want to thank all of you, especially uh, William and Narissa, for your, uh, uh, your passionate uh, sharing of the evidence and, uh, and the rationale for this work. And uh, we'll see you all uh, next time.